Cain's apple pie, made with ingredients so good and pure you'll be screaming for more. History of Evils is a shutter original from XYZ Films and writer-director Bo Mirosani, who's done some shorts. Check out his IMDb page for the full listen of his work. This is set in the year 2045, where every man, woman, animal, vegetable, and mineral are still alive, but boy, they are sure to buy dead. Thanks to a bunch of corruption and a new civil war that has put the U.S. under an authoritarian rule called the North American Federation, where you have people fighting for God and country and the purity of the human race to make sure that we don't let them, their people, take over us. And also the resistance over here. God, it's a good thing nothing like that is on the goddamn horizon with how some crackpots are acting. Oh boy, oh howdy, no, this is a horror movie on Shudder. Hence why I said it was a Shudder original, because if it wasn't a Shudder original, I'd be goddamn lying, and I don't want to lie on these things. I want to talk about movies like History of Evil. So, you have a family, you have Ron, no, not Captain Ron, played by Paul Wesley, <coughs> and you have his imprisoned, but now freed wife, Allegra. Ah, Allegra. And once I remembered that advertising campaign, I couldn't take the movie seriously. Not that the movie really tried to sway me differently, but nevertheless, you have Jackie Cruz playing Ah, uh, Allegra. And they have a daughter, so I guess that qualifies as a family. You don't have the 2.3 children because that 0.3 child would be miserable, dragging themselves around like they were in Hellraiser. Or like that family guy piece on Two and a Half Men. Ah! So, yeah, basically, they have to hole up at this house that's used as an extraction point for the resistance. And nobody will come here because everybody's afraid of it. At least that's what they want you to believe. <clears throat> so, we know this is set in the not-too-distant future. Not next Sunday, A.D. Not a guy named Joel or anyone too different from you or me. No bots, just a drone. We see a drone about three times in this movie. That's how you know it's futuristic. And also, you get some people that go around with guns for America, God, and country, and everything. And boy, if this movie was hitting you over the head anymore with this shit, you might get a goddamn concussion. A concussion might actually explain the presentation of this particular movie, while a neat little idea. And <clears throat> there's the germ of having some horror here. Unfortunately, the movie doesn't end up really doing anything other than plodding along and just meandering. And trying to, you know, just have an amalgamation of stuff human centipede together from other movies like the Amityville Horror Remake and just other stuff like, you know, other politically charged <laughs> but also, you know, racially charged horror movies, which you can do, but some of them that have been on Shutter recently haven't been all that great. And unfortunately, if you can't add a little bit of satire along with your horror, you're not going to do it right. That's the one thing about the Purge movies. At least they had a great advertising campaign. It just weren't good otherwise. So this basically centers around just a few people in a house. So you only have to shoot in one location. Like, really, outside of, I think, the first 10 to 15 minutes. <clears throat> where you're just in this house or on the grounds. And that's fine. A low-budget production isn't the worst thing in the world. The thing is, though, while the actors certainly try, none of the characters are worth rooting for. None of them. I mean, the kid is super goddamn annoying. I mean, I'm not talking about the actress. I'm talking about the kid herself. And, yeah, just from there, we just assume that there's, you know, a resistance and God and country people fighting. We only hear about it. And that's really all we get here. Also, we get a backstory on the house, and there's a history of evil in a movie called History of Evil. My God, how creative. Look, it sounds like I'm dumping on this, and I appreciate what everybody was trying to do, but this movie was not good. It was not good at all. It's on Shudder if you want to check it out. I'm going to get into spoilers, because I want to spoil a few things. Three, two, one, spoilers. By the way, Shudder is a great streaming service if you are a horror fan, and there you are. So, um, <laughs> yeah, you get the radio stuff, you know, about, you know, God and Country, all this resistance, and they're trying to, um, you know, make it where it's like we're just one, you know, generation away from people <laughs> taking the country back from us that really care about every. <laughs> But, and that's not making fun of anybody from the South or whatever. It's just the way this movie presents everybody. But, yes, uh, Allegra ends up uh, being a, uh, freed from a prison. Her daughter doesn't necessarily recognize her. They have a dog. The dog dies, by the way, off camera, so at least there's that. And then we have a drone. And then we don't see the drone for about another 30 minutes. And 
we can't, uh, we, you know, can't leave the house or whatever because we can't afford to shoot <coughs> anywhere except around the house is really what they should have said. That's fine, though. Yeah, the kid doesn't react well to yelling. Well, everybody should have been yelled at on this goddamn set. Like, please, find something else to do. So, then we see a commercial about Kane's apple pie. Kane, <coughs> that's got to be Kane. That's K, or that's C-A-I-N. It'd be interesting, actually, if it was K-A-N-E, because that would align with the wrestler that, you know, was named Kane, Glenn Jacobs, if you know, you know. But yeah, Kane's Apple Pie, filmed all the way back, apparently, when TV was just getting started. Apple Pie with white cane sugar and all this, all these ingredients. And then, basically, we get a rapid descent for Captain Ron, or not Captain Ron, questioning his own masculinity because he's trying to raise his daughter right. Allegra hasn't been around for a bit. And then he starts seeing the ghosts of Kane. After they find a hood in the uh, wall, a white hood, a clan hood, just in case you weren't figuring it out yet. After they turn the water on and the one lady that's with them, um, African American lady says, the hood doesn't scare me, it's the animals uh, beneath it. And that's fair. See, that's actually not a bad line. Had they dived into that a little more, that would have been okay. So, um, Kane ends up marking Captain Ron with his blood during a either a psychosis dream or possibly just because we need to justify him turning into the Amityville Horror Dad. I love how the night vision goggles looked like they were the first ones ever invented. Good God, Atari games looked better. Hey, the drone is here. Yay, thanks, drone. Thanks for making an appearance again. There were so many lingering shots in this. If they had cut, and it wasn't for atmosphere, it was to draw it out. If they had cut out some of the lingering shots, 25 minutes of this movie would have been shaved off. And this was a 97 minute movie with credits. So, Ron starts hallucinating talking to Kane, and Kane is telling him everything he wants to hear like, oh, your mother's trying to, or your wife's trying to take your daughter and make her her own. That's why I, you know, killed my wife because she was trying to turn my son against me. He also said a certain word that rhymes with, um, it's how British people say the word can't. I can't say it on YouTube because even though it's one of my favorite insults for man, woman, or anybody, can't say it here. But it's great. <laughs> And then there's this, he basically gets into his head like, hey, the father fox was hunting the mother and the baby fox helped a rabbit out of the river instead of uh, killing it. So he ate them. Everything. Bones and all. Which is a much better movie. <clears throat> so don't make your, don't make your wife, you know, make you question your masculinity. Don't let her take away your masculinity. No, this is scary. None of it. None of it at all. There's like one reference to um, <clears throat> Daria. No, not the character from Beavis and Butthead, as hilarious as that would have been. But the daughter basically <clears throat> having to, um, the daughter saying, oh, I see, I'm, I'm, you know, guessing these games and everything. There was this hand game where, like, the hand games where you know, the mother had, uh, Allegra had the hands behind her. And she was doing, like, you know, numbers and everything, like, you know, with her hands. You know, like, how many fingers am I holding up? And the boy was helping out. The boy right behind you. We don't reference that boy again. Or if they do, I zoned out. I zoned out pretty early on in this. Because I didn't give a shit. <laughs> I said this is Amityville levels of stupidity. Uh, a bunch of cowards show up. Just want to say, by the way, if you agree with the, you know... It, it, it's like the January Sixers, you know, they were all cowards. So, yeah, a bunch of these hick guys show up. This entire film is a mess. Uh, Captain Ron plays up being, you know, on their side. <clears throat> maybe he was. Maybe we just didn't find out this story. Maybe, maybe I don't really give a shit. He might have been a descendant of Cain. I ain't give a shit if he was, because even if he was, it wouldn't have fucking mattered. It really wouldn't have mattered. It wouldn't have actually made the movie any more interesting. Cain wants Ron basically to fulfill his potential. <clears throat> And then there's a burning cross on the goddamn lawn, as if we didn't get more symbolic. And then he decides, hey, goddammit, I've had it, and we need to wrap this film up. I'm going to get a rope. I'm going to drag Allegra to the goddamn tree, the big old tree that has stuff hanging off of it. And he busts up the radio, and mass acceleration here, and then he gets the gun from 
one of the characters and ends up shooting himself. So he doesn't kill his family. Then they bury him in sheet and then the uh, cowards show up again. And after the drone shows up and instantly those guys are there. Where where were they? Is there an outpost literally like 10 feet away? I mean, where... And then they hide and then um, one of them sets a house on fire and they escape. They get on the radio. They kick the one guy out of the truck and send out this message where it's, it's all going to be great. It's great. Ding. Yeah, history of evil, it might have actually worked if there was any evil in it. Yes, racism is evil. The thing is, is none of the characters are interesting. Good, bad, or indifferent, they weren't. They were not. F, I'm sorry, F, it wasn't good. Maybe you'll feel differently. Check it out anyway. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rutland. I'll see you soon.